It's the Scotty Meyer Show. Hey, how's it going this week? Welcome to the show. Uh, first off, to subscribers, if you didn't see the Instagram, Facebook post, uh, if you were looking for the show on Thursday, obviously it wasn't there. I apologize. Uh, thank you for subscribing. And uh, it is my goal to make sure that you get a show every Thursday. And uh, this week, I just couldn't do it. I was away. The company that I work for took us to these meetings. It was a week long of, uh, of meetings at a very, very nice resort in Quebec. But I couldn't figure out. It kind of snuck up on me. And I didn't properly prepare to have the right gear, to have the right apps, to have all that kind of stuff set up so that I could sneak away for a little bit and record a podcast. And so I was trying to do it with all the downtime that I had. I was looking at a bunch of different apps, testing out just the mic on my iPhone without having um, some sort of external mic to, to help boost the sound. And I just wasn't really happy with, with how it was going. So I figured I, I'd wait till I got home and shoehorn in this episode. There will be another episode on Thursday uh, this coming week, but I wanted to get this one in because there's some things I wanted to talk about that if I waited for a week, um, they'd be super, super dated, and then we'd have like an hour-long show, which we might get to eventually anyway uh, once some things that I've started the ball rolling on uh, come to fruition. But uh, for now, we're sticking with this format. So uh, thanks for your patience. And again, I apologize that I missed it, but... Yeah, off at this beautiful, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly. It's called La Baluchon, I think. My French is terrible. Uh, so, but absolutely stunning place. Uh, you can see some photos on, on the Instagram, uh, Scotty Mars Show. But uh, learned a lot. It was a fun trip, but I miss doing this uh, for you guys. I also had a roommate uh, for the first time in a long time. And I... I forgot, like, it's one thing when I'm sitting around farting, that's no big deal, uh, you know, and I still laugh every time someone uh, rips a fart, but I forgot how much dudes in general, especially when they're around each other, just let them fly. Like, I don't know that these things had a name, all these meetings, like it's like annual meetings or annual manager meetings or whatever it was, but really it could have been far, Fart Fest 2019. That's really what it should have been called because the dudes were just letting them fly all over the place. And the guy that I was uh, sharing a room with, he has some impressive gas. I just want to say, like, there was a couple that, that shook the room. I thought there was an earthquake. It was it was impressive. And I kind of forgot about that. It's been so long since I've been in that atmosphere. So uh, that was fun. I also had a bit of an embarrassing moment, like only embarrassing for me. But uh, I was in my room, used the bathroom, and we were eating a lot at these meetings. So when I, I say that to preface that there was a lot going on in the toilet. Is all I, I'm trying to say it as nicely as I can. Anyway, when it flushed, uh, when it flushed, when it flushed, uh, it was, you know, what you call a streaker, right? It left some, some tracks on the bowl. And my roomie had put out the sign for housekeeping. So I go out and I'm in the hall and I'm talking on the phone and then I'm like, oh, I forgot something in the room. And I go back to the room and I notice our door is open and the housekeeping cart is there. And I walk two steps in and I can hear her scrubbing down the toilet. And I was like, oh, she's cleaning the mess I made. And I was like ghastly embarrassed for a second. I had to turn around, run out of the room. Uh, didn't get what I went back for. I said, fuck it. I'll get it later. <laughs> I don't want to deal with Oh, you're the guy that just did that. Because she doesn't know how many people are in that room. If you're a housekeeper and you're in there and you're probably cursing the son of a bitch that did it. And then you see somebody come in the room. You definitely think that that's the guy that left you streaks to clean up. So uh, I didn't get her name. I left her a good tip, but I didn't get her name. But I, I 100% apologize for that. So moving on from... <laughs> my bodily functions and how I destroyed a toilet in Quebec. Uh, there's lots of crazy kind of news uh, going on in the world while I was away. And the one story that really caught my attention was this whole Area 51 storming. I don't know if you've heard about this. Of course, you've probably heard about Area 51, the supposed place that the U.S. government keeps all their alien technology and, and aliens themselves. Depending on the stories you've read, there's 
uh, alien spacecraft out there. There's alien weaponry out there. There's alien uh, like health technology out there. Flat right out to aliens themselves living there. Not dead, not just alien bodies. I've read some people that go, oh no, I've seen them. There's aliens that live there. It's like it's their condo. They hang out there. It's been years that people have been like, we want to know the truth of Area 51. It's the worst kept secret in the world, Area 51. And so somebody came up with a Facebook idea, uh, created an event with plans to storm Area 51 to find out the truth about what's going on there. Because, of course, they'll be able to open the, I'm sure, security locked doors. But anyway, uh, if you want to join them, Apparently, the plan is Friday, September 20th at 3 in the morning. And a, more than 200,000 people have already said they're planning to go. Now, most of those people are not going. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, <laughs> the best case scenario here is you're going to get pepper sprayed. Uh, I guess middle case scenario is you get shot, go to prison. Worst case, they do have alien technology and you just get obliterated. Like <sighs> drawn to dust like Mars attacks or something like that. Uh, Facebook event is called Storm Area 51. They can't stop us all. Uh, the invitation says, quote, let's see them aliens. So that kind of puts you in the mindset of the person that came up with this idea. Um, you know, let's see them aliens. Come on, Paul, let's go see them. Uh, <laughs> I don't think this is going to go uh, very well at all. So again, if you want to be part of it, September 20th, Three in the morning. I, I, they say 200,000 people have uh, clicked that they're going on the Facebook event. I would say it's going to end up being 30 people standing on a ridge in the desert, looking at each other and realizing, you know what? They can stop all of us. Well, let's just go get a beer. Time for the off story of the week. Of course, that's the story when you read the headline. You just go... Oh, for fuck's sakes. And I kind of have two of them this week. One silly and one a little serious. Uh, the silly one, it's the Area 51 one was kind of a bit like that too. But the, the silly one is a guy is arrested when his car catches on fire during a gender reveal stunt. Now, I'm sure you've seen this on social media. You've probably even been invited to one of these stupid things. Uh, gender reveal parties are probably the dumbest fucking things on the planet. It's another way that somebody figured out to get gifts. That's all this is. You know, yeah, you're curious what your friends uh, may be having for their, you know, like when they, they want to tell you what the gender reveal is. But at the end of the day, you don't need to have a party for it. You don't need to get a gift. You don't need to go through all these elaborate fucking ways to shoot blue or pink confetti in the air or release blue or pink balloons or whatever the hell you're going to do. It's really dumb. So anyway, a guy in Australia was doing a gender reveal stunt where he was going to do some burnouts with his car and then the exhaust would either be blue or pink. Uh, he started doing the burnouts and then his car caught fire. Uh, he was arrested for reckless driving and he wound up getting a $1,000 fine. His license has been suspended for six months if you're curious, the exhaust was blue, so they're having a baby boy. And uh, I think the bigger story here is, uh, regardless of the gender, uh, based on the actions of the father and that he thought this was a good idea to reveal the gender of his baby and subsequently what happened, I'm going to take a guess on saying the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. And regardless of gender, they're having an idiot. Offs. Now, before we get into the geek news of the week, um, this story kind of bridges the gap a little bit between an off story and uh, and the geek news. It, and it took me by surprise when I saw the headlines. But Disney's been doing all these live action remakes of their classic animated films, especially from the kind of Disney Renaissance period where they have Beauty and the Beast and and the Little Mermaid, and and Mulan, and, and all these fantastic films. And so now they're doing the live-action Little Mermaid. And we knew they were gearing up production on this, and that it was coming soon. And, and everybody was curious who's going to play Ariel. Now, if you go with how they drew her, you would instantly think, well, it's going to be like a redhead, and, and, and all that kind of thing. But 
it doesn't have to be right. Like who fits the role? Who do you as a producer and a director? And after you go through audition after audition, think nails the spirit of Ariel more than anything else. And so they casted a 19 year old girl named Halle Bailey. I think like most people, when I first saw it, I saw Halle Berry and I was like, I like Halle Berry. I think she might be a tad old to play the little mermaid, but Hey, sure. Whatever. Uh, CG can do wonderful things. So I wasn't super familiar with Halle Bailey. I looked her up online. I've, I've seen some clips of her singing. She's got a beautiful voice. And uh, I think she's going to be fantastic in the part. I trust their casting. However, it became a big to-do online, the fact that she's African-American. And they're like, we can't have a mermaid that's African-American. We've seen stupid controversies like this pop up online before, whether it's been race or sex. Um, you know, people really pissed off over how many female characters were in Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, it's really dumb. Like, really fucking dumb. And as I said with the Star Wars thing, it was like, you know what? If you have a problem with strong female characters, you're not welcome in the Star Wars universe. Sorry. Just, it's not for you, man. And if you have a problem with the race of somebody that they cast to play a role, a fictional role. Like mermaids aren't real. They don't exist. So you have no argument here. I don't think there's ever really an argument for this, but at the end of the day, you really don't have an argument when it is something that does not exist. You have no yardstick to measure it to. You can't try and point out some uh, you know, inaccuracy with the casting, if that's what you're trying to base your weak ass argument on, when mermaids aren't fucking real. So I have a, like, if you are this upset about the casting of this very talented 19 year old girl in this role, you have missed the point of every Disney movie for the last 20 plus years. Like you've missed the core messages that have come across in these films about, you know, being nice to people, loving your neighbor, being respectful, not caring about anybody else's differences. These are all the core principles of most of the Disney animated films. And obviously in your mind, if you're this upset about this casting, you're a fan in your mind, you think you're a fan of these movies, but in your heart, you're not because you've missed the message of them. So maybe my advice to you is if you're this pissed off over the casting of The Little Mermaid, maybe go back and watch The Little Mermaid. And don't just sing along to the songs, which are amazing, but actually look at the moral tale underneath it all and maybe, just maybe, I doubt it because you're probably really fucking hard-headed, but maybe, just maybe, the message of that movie will seep into your brain and you'll realize that the hate and everything that you threw out online at this poor girl that was probably going to knock this role out of the park was so misplaced and so wrong that you'll feel the shame that you should feel for it. All right, I've got that out of my system and I hope that sunk into some people really angered me when I saw that this week it's been, like I'm a Disney fan I love Disney if you guys listen to the show you know I live for going to Disney World I'm a big fan of Disney movies and uh I, this really bothered me this week so I had to I had to kind of spoke have my say about it there uh so we'll move on to the other geek news of the week and we'll start off with Disney uh, might as well. Easy transition here. And speaking of those live action flicks, they've got two new ones that they dropped trailers for. Uh, we got to see our first look at the live action Mulan, and it looks incredible. The only real criticism is we didn't get to see uh, Mushu, the dragon. But other than that, the film looks absolutely phenomenal. Uh, really, really, really looking forward to the live action Mulan. It will hit theaters on March 27th of next year. And then the next day, right after Disney gave us the Mulan trailer, which was amazing, they then hit us with the trailer for Maleficent 2, 
uh, Mistress of Evil. Uh, that one, I kind of was a little hesitant when I saw this one. I thought the first movie was fantastic. Uh, Angelina Jolie was great in the role. And uh, this one, I was a little hesitant about it. It's five years after the events of the first movie. Um, the relationship between uh, the soon-to-be queen and, and Maleficent, a little bit more complex. And uh, after seeing the trailer, I am 100% on board. I think this looks really good. It looks like it's going to be actually pretty dark. Uh, at some points in the film. So uh, really, really excited for this one. And this one we don't have to wait quite as long for. Uh, it was supposed to come out in May of next year, but they have moved it up. So we're actually going to get it on uh, October 18th of this year. So just a few months away, uh, we'll get to see this. If you have not seen either of these trailers, I will throw them up uh, on our Facebook page and on our Twitter. It's at Scotty Mars on Twitter and the Scotty Mars Show on Facebook. They're definitely worth watching. Uh, watch them on the best screen you have because there's lots of great visual effects in both. Uh, moving on to the superhero world. This one was just stupid. People on the internet love to nitpick whatever they can. And Jason Momoa was on vacation somewhere or something, and he was walking around with his uh, shirt off, and uh, people started body shaming him. Yes, body shaming Jason Momoa. Aquaman. Because he doesn't have his abs right now. He's not filming a movie. He's not probably training as hard. So kind of like any fighter, uh, like UFC, boxing, whatever, they put on a few extra pounds when they're not kind of in game shape, as it were. It happens to a lot of athletes, too. In the offseason, they gain some extra weight, and then they have to drop it before uh, the season starts again. So by no means does he look out of shape. He just, he just isn't chiseled right now. No big deal, right? The internet ripping him apart for it. Now, some people have come to his defense, but I looked at the picture, and I went, if that is the picture that this fucker is getting body shamed for, I am never leaving the house unless I have about 40 layers on. Because there is no... Way, like, this guy's body in this condition, which is not his game shape, is better than probably 99% of most other people's bodies. The guy is a genetic freak. And if that's what's going to get ripped apart by the internet... I know it's a bunch of jealous dudes whose wives would much rather be going to bed with Jason Momoa than them. My wife probably wants to go to bed with Jason Momoa more than she wants to go to bed with me. But, uh, you know, just relax. Let the dude eat some ice cream when he's not busy filming Aquaman. You know, he'll have to get in Aquaman shape soon enough to film the sequel. So let him enjoy some downtime. Just silly. Uh, sticking with DC, but more on the comic book side. Right now, we're in that lull before Comic-Con, so the massive announcements aren't really there. But we are getting some really cool comic book announcements. And from DC, we have gotten uh, a couple of really neat ones. First off, uh, Jeff Lemire, who is a fantastic writer, is doing a couple of new books for the DC Black line. He's doing a new Joker book and a new book focusing on The Question. It's a really cool underutilized character in the DC universe. I'd like to see them do more with the question. So uh, nice to see him uh, getting a crack at these. If you want to add these books to your collection, uh, The Joker, Killing Smiles, a three-part story. First uh, issue is going to come out on October 30th of this year and then uh, one every month. Following that, the question, uh, it's called The Deaths of Vic Savage, is a four-part story. First episode of that will drop November 20th of this year, and then one every other month following that. And then in two of my favorite things on the planet coming together, this is literally like chocolate and peanut butter going together, John Carpenter, the genius filmmaker behind Halloween, They Live, The Fog, is so many other uh, amazing films, is teaming up with DC Comics and writing a new adventure featuring the Joker. Uh, this year at DC is the year of the villain, and uh, they're going to have an awesome one-shot comic, uh, 40 pages, with John Carpenter taking on the Clown Prince of Crime. This is 
Very, very cool. Uh, it's going to be a must read for me. I would say if you can pre-order it now, put it on your pull list at your comic book store, do whatever you can to make sure you get one of these. Uh, it is going to be in stores uh, on Wednesday, October 2nd. It's uh, This to me is going to be mind-blowing, so I cannot wait to get my hands on that. And finally, Sam Raimi is a fantastic filmmaker. Of course, he gave us The Evil Dead, uh, Army of Darkness, and was the guy that brought Spider-Man to the big screen very successfully many years ago with the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films. Uh, many people argue the first two rank right up there among the best superhero movies ever. And then a lot of people don't like the third one so much, which I totally understand. But the thing was... Sam Raimi had plans to do a fourth Spider-Man movie. And he's out right now doing some press uh, for a new movie called Crawl that he helped bring to the big screen. And he's gotten some questions about Spider-Man. And he admitted that not making that fourth movie kind of haunts him to this day. He says, I think about it all the time. It's hard not to because every summer there's another Spider-Man movie that comes out. So he said, when you kind of have this unborn one, you can't help but think what might have been. He says, I try not to focus on it, not look into the past too much, but it does kind of stick out into his into his head. And uh, he, he had a plan for that fourth Spider-Man movie. It would have featured, interestingly enough, Vulture and Mysterio as the two villains in it. Of course, those are the two villains that have been the newest incarnation of Spider-Man on the big screen's main foes so far. So uh, kind of interesting that that's where Sam Raimi's mind was going, and that's instantly where Marvel's mind went when they got to work on Spider-Man again. Little bit bittersweet for him, but uh, he is definitely a, not hurting. He's got tons of great movies down the pipeline, but I don't know. Would you have wanted to see a fourth Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire, especially after the mess that was Spider-Man 3? I think even if it was fantastic, it probably wouldn't have been received very well because of that bad taste in people's mouth from the whole Venom debacle in Spider-Man 3. Less said about that, the better. Uh, that will do it for this week's episode of the show. Again, follow us on social media at The Scotty Mars Show on Instagram and Facebook at Scotty Mars on Twitter. You can always reach out to me there. Uh, as a few people did when I didn't have a show up on Thursday. And again, I apologize for that. And uh, you can also check us out on BlastTheRadio.com, streaming Thursday mornings, 8.30 Eastern Time. Uh, we're on iTunes, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts and wherever you are listening to us. Give us a thumbs up, a five-star rating, a little review. Definitely helps spread the word. So until we chat again, have a great week.